Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series today We are opening up a very special pack of time spiral uh, Time spiral is a great set. There's a lot of good cards in it Academy ruins right now is sitting at the top right around $30 uh, There's also gemstone cavern gauntlet of power of Asuva, all fantastic picks a lot of them are, are lands out of the set interestingly uh, as always, we will go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario. So we'll do our best uh, to find our first pick. I will go ahead and say I am not amazing at draft. Uh, so I very easily can get this wrong. But by all means, if you disagree, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy to have that discussion. Uh, but we kick off with a Nantuko Shaman. It is a 3-2 for 3. Uh, when it comes into play, if you control no tapped lands, uh, you draw a card. Uh, and then you can suspend it for one, which basically puts it out of play uh, for, in this case, one turn. And then on your upkeep, you remove a time counter from it uh, and put it onto the battlefield. In this case, you can do that for two and two green. Uh, this is an interesting card. I feel like it's okay. I think it's like decent filler. Uh, sometimes it'll draw you a card. I, I don't know. I'm not sold on it, uh, but I feel like it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, Castle Raptors. 3-3 uh, three, three for 5. Uh, it does have flying, and as long as Castle Raptors is untapped, uh, it gets plus 0, plus 2. So as long as it's untapped, it's basically a 3-5 flyer. That seems pretty good to me. I like that better than the Shaman, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'd rather have that, that boost in the actual power, not necessarily the toughness, but it's going to be harder to get rid of. Uh, and obviously it's a flyer, so it's got built-in evasion. I do like that. Um, Gorgon Recluse is a 2-4 for 5. Uh, when it blocks or becomes blocked by a non-black creature, destroy that creature at the end of combat. Uh, it also has a madness cost of two black, uh, which basically means if you would discard this card, you can play, you can pay the madness cost instead and actually put it onto the battlefield. This card is great. Uh, it deals with a lot of creatures. Uh, obviously, it's sort of like pseudo death touch. Obviously, it's specific. Uh, it doesn't hit black creatures, but it is still very powerful. So I definitely like that card. Uh, Spike Tail Drakeling is a 2-2 two, two for 3 with flying. Uh, you can also sacrifice it in counter, tar counter target spell unless its controller pays 2 of any color. This also seems great. Uh, it's a stall card, but it's also an evasive uh, 2 damage threat. Yeah, that's not huge, but for 3 mana, that's pretty good. Uh, and then also you can kind of just cash this in anytime you need to to either uh, get them on a spell or maybe tap them down for a turn. That way you can get in your wink on the next turn. Uh, so I do like that. Uh, Scarwood Tree Folk is a 3-5 for 4. Uh, it comes into play tapped. Pretty straightforward. I'm not a fan of this card. I think it's just too slow. Uh, I will say I didn't really play during Time Spiral, at least draft during Time Spiral. Uh, I did actually own a lot of these cards, but I didn't ever draft. So I don't know if this is good. I feel like it's probably not, though. It just seems underpowered and really slow uh, for this format. Uh, Orcish Cannonade is an instant for 3. Uh, it deals 2 damage to target creature or player and 3 damage to you. You also can draw a card. Uh, this seems bad kind of on the face of it just because you have to take damage. But honestly, if you're in a red deck, you're hopefully going to be ahead in the life game. Uh, which means this probably is not nearly as bad as it looks on the face of it. I feel like dealing 2 damage to target creature or player is useful. It's going to hit a, n a fair number of things. And then it also does replace itself, which is something in red, at least, it seems to be pretty hard to come by. So I actually like this card. I don't think I like it more than the creatures we already have, but I don't think it's bad. Uh, Glass Asp is a 2-1 for 3. Uh, it deals combat damage to a player. That player loses 2 life at the beginning of his or her next draw step, unless he or she pays 2 before that step. Uh, I think this is okay. It's more filler. Uh, I don't think it's great. Yeah, it can theoretically deal a good bit of damage. Uh, but one, they have the option to pay for it, and two, it's only a 2-1. Uh, and a 2-1 coming in for three just seems pretty bad, so not a fan of that. Uh, Prismatic Lens is a great card. Uh, it's an artifact for two uh, of any color, and you can tap it to add one mana, uh, one generic mana, to your mana pool. You also can tap one of any color and tap it to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. This card is fantastic in certain formats. Uh, I don't know how great it is in this format, because I don't know how many colors generally you're going to be pushing. Uh, that being said, it's always going to be mana ramp. It's always going to skip you ahead if you play it on turn two. When you untap on turn three, if you have a land to play that turn, you're going to be on basically turn four. Uh, so it's actually a great card. I will keep it in this pile for now. I don't know if it does enough, uh, I will say, in draft. Uh, just because a lot of times you want to be very proactive. And while this is great, 
Uh, I think at two, I might want to be playing something else. I might be wrong, though. Uh, Ground Rift is a sorcery for one red. Target creature without flying can't block this turn. It also has Storm, so you get to copy it for every spell that was played before it this turn. I don't particularly like this card. I think it's fine uh, sideboard tech against decks that don't necessarily have a lot of flyers. Uh, if you're trying to just kind of beat face with it. Otherwise, I don't think it's that good. It is cheap, uh, and you do get to Storm, so most often you're probably going to hit maybe two, three creatures with it. Uh, ideally, maybe up to five would be great, but like I feel like that's kind of pushing it because you're going to have to play a lot of very cheap stuff to make that worthwhile, so not a fan of that. Uh, Eternity Snare is five and a blue for an enchantment. Uh, you, enchant it, you enchant a creature, and when it comes into play, you draw a card. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. This is fantastic. It's a little bit late game, but it does replace itself. Uh, and of course, it's blue removal. It's kind of classic blue and white removal with the enchantment theme, uh, but I do like that. Our first uncommon is Harmonic Sliver. I forgot slivers were in the set. I feel like I always do every time I open this. Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one for 3, uh, 1 a green and a white. And all slivers have, when this creature comes into play, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Uh, this is very much a constructed card. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's fantastic in a sliver deck, uh, which you can definitely try and draft, but I feel like it's not quite enough support to actually make that happen. Uh, maybe if you got really lucky, but uh, I don't think this is great in draft. I think at best you might hit something like some random artifact like a prismatic lens, uh, which is fine, but not great. So I'm not a fan of that. Oops. Sorry, guys. Uh, premature bur burial is one in a black for a sorcery destroy target non-black creature uh, that came into play since your last turn ended uh, which is a little bit funny but a very powerful card obviously it lets you deal with a, th a threat excuse me very efficiently for only two mana uh, so I do like that I will keep that here for now uh, fledgling markor Makor might be mispronouncing that it's a 2-2 for 4 uh, with flying and you can tap it to deal 1 damage to target creature or player uh, you can also morph it for 2 blue which basically lets you put it face down as a 2-2 creature uh, and then you can flip it over for 3 uh, or excuse me for its morph cost uh, so I actually really like this card I think it's pretty good a 2-2 flyer for 4 is like whatever but it does get to ping stuff uh, so that just means any low level creatures are not going to be doing anything and no matter what, this is going to be able to either block or deal some damage. Uh, it just seems pretty good, so I'll keep it in the pile for now. And our rare is Pulmonic Sliver. It is a 3-3 for 5. All slivers have flying, and if this creature would be put into a graveyard, you may put it on top of its owner's library instead. Obviously, again, a very powerful card. This is great in a sliver deck. This is obviously a reason to be in a sliver deck. Uh, but because I don't know how much support there is in this actual uh, set for slivers, I know there's a decent amount, but I don't know that there's really enough to make it work. I probably wouldn't want to take it. Uh, and then our time-shifted card is Serrated Arrows. So it's an artifact for four. Uh, it comes into play with three arrowhead counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are no arrowhead counters on it, uh, you do have to sacrifice it. But you also tap and remove an arrowhead counter from it to put a negative one, negative one counter on target creature. Uh, so it's basically long-term removal, and just in general, it's really, really good because obviously you don't have to kill a creature. You can just sort of dim it down a little bit, so that way your current creatures can actually deal with it. Uh, so this sort of lets you spread that damage out. It's a good card. I don't think it's uh, necessarily the pick. I think we've actually got a decent number of good picks in this. Uh, I honestly, I kind of feel like the Recluse might be the way to go. Uh, I could be very wrong about that. There's some solid removal in this pack. Uh, blue seems really strong. Um, black also seems pretty good. And then, of course, Prismatic Lens is great, too. Uh, I could honestly see taking a lot of cards in this, but I think I would go with the Recluse. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Please let me know if you think that I am, uh, but by all means, uh, disagree with me. I'm totally fine with that, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below, uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack video.